Good morning. Good morning. Good to be with you this morning. Hi, Mom. Hi, Dad. <laughs> there I told Pastor, he said, he was telling me about the video, and he said he was, he was going to say, give it up for Pastor Andrew, and I said, I'll, I'll walk up, and I'll be like, yeah, come on, come on, come on. But you know that's not me at all. So, um, but it is, it is good to be with you this morning, and, and I have been enjoying this, this series too, hashtag Jesus, where we just kind of click on the hashtag and find out what's being said about Jesus, right, and what, what the Word says about Jesus and his life. But before we get started, I just want to uh, talk about a couple things real quick. I know they talked about it in the video, but if you didn't get a chance to, uh, to tune into the break on Friday at 1230 on Facebook, um, I would encourage you to get online next Friday at 12:30. The break is just this really cool little podcast type thing that Brian and Pastor Brian and Pastor Zach and Carter are are working on and it's just a great way to uh, tell us about what's going on in the church. You might get a sneak peek into some things that we're doing and and how many of you know God is doing a lot of great things through Woodlawn Church. He is he is working, he is faithful. And the break is just a way to uh, just tune into that and, and find out what's going on in the church. It was a lot of fun on Friday. We had a great, I had a great time just interacting and, and just watching those guys on there. So, and then the other thing I want to remind you about is uh, water baptisms are coming up in two weeks. If you want to be baptized, if you've made a decision to follow Christ, I would encourage you to uh, make that decision public by being baptized. And, you know, maybe you were baptized at, you know, in an earlier, at an earlier age, and, and you, you fell away from the faith, or you walked away from that commitment, and you've made a new commitment to follow Christ, you know, you can be baptized again. Maybe you're wondering, can I be baptized again? You can be baptized again. We would love to just celebrate that decision, celebrate that commitment with you. It's going to be a great time on February 21st, so I would just encourage you all to come out and celebrate with us. So if you don't mind today, uh, if you would stand up, we're going to read God's word. I want to say hello to everyone online. Can we just give everyone online a, a good hello? We love you. Thank you for joining us. And uh, we, we're just excited that you're with us. So we are in Matthew chapter 5. We're starting out the Sermon on the Mount. And Jesus starts out with this section. If you look in your Bibles... Uh, it's, it's called the Beatitudes, and we're just going to kind of do a high-level overview of the Beatitudes this morning, but let's read from Matthew chapter 5. It says, In seeing the multitudes, he went up on a mountain, and when he was seated, his disciples came to him. Then he opened his mouth and taught them, saying, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn, for they shall be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they shall be filled. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called sons of God. Blessed are those who are persecuted for righteousness' sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. And blessed are you when they revile and persecute you and say all kinds of evil against you falsely for my sake. Rejoice and be exceedingly glad, for great is your reward in heaven. For so they persecuted the prophets who were before you. Lord, we just thank you for your word. We thank you for sending your son to this earth so that we could learn how to, how to live a godly life. Thank you for sending that example for us. And I just pray now that as you speak to us today, Lord, that we wouldn't walk out of here the same people that, that we walked in here, or that we would be changed, that your Holy Spirit would teach us. And it's in your name we pray. Amen. Well, you can have a seat. So today we're, we're clicking on hashtag Jesus, and there's another hashtag, hashtag blessed, Right? And uh, so I just wanted to kind of show you a few things that, that make me feel blessed in my life. So the other day, Pastor Matt, or a few weeks ago, Pastor Matt showed you pictures of his dog, Harley. And you know, like, if you have a dog and someone shows you a picture of their dog, you're like, 
that's nice, right? Like, like I'm glad you think that's a cute dog, but my dogs are cuter. And um, that's kind of what I thought when Pastor showed us Harley. Like, that's a cute dog. I've met Harley. Um, and, and he's a cute dog, but he ain't as cute as my dogs. I'm just, just telling you what. And I know that you'll um, probably feel that same way about your dogs, that they're, your dogs are cuter than my dogs. It's not true. Um, but, but so we have, I have some pictures of my dogs. So this, this is Molly. Yeah, this is Molly, and she's about eight years old. We got her when she was one. We got her from the Humane Society, and I'm pretty sure that they, I, we thought they said she was some sort of t- terrier, but I'm pretty sure they said terror, um, <laughs> because when we got her, she destroyed everything. Every, I mean, she, we had, we went through two cages. We went through, we had a metal cage, and it was kind of bent at the top, and so I put zip ties all around the cage. She chewed off all of those zip ties and escaped through the top of that cage. So then we went and got her a plastic crate, and I came home for lunch one day, and she was sitting on the couch, kind of like, it was a different house, but she was sitting on the back of the couch looking out the window, and I was like, well, that ain't good, because she was in the cage when I left. She had chewed a hole through the side of one of those heavy-duty plastic crates, and we didn't think we were going to be able to keep her, because like, she just kept escaping and then tearing up the house. We didn't know what to do, and finally, our, our good friend Taylor, who's here this morning, she, uh, her parents uh, lovingly donated, we still have it, even though we don't use it, but um, lovingly donated this huge cage. I mean, it's like this tall, and, and she finally didn't know how to escape from that. So, and she doesn't even have to be in a cage anymore. She's great. She's a great dog. So um, that's my, I could talk all day about my dogs. Um, this is, so this dog here, we got her as a puppy, and she's just a big baby, as you can see. And when we got her, she was just so cute, and I, and I so badly wanted to name my dog Snots. Um, if you've ever seen the movie Christmas Vacation, their dog is named Snots in that movie, and I just think it would be so cool to have a dog named Snots, and Jen was like, no, we are not naming this precious little nugget that is sitting in my, the palm of my hand, right? We are not naming her Snots. And um, she wanted to name her Myrtle, and because we have dog, we have M names for our dogs. So we have Molly. We had Maggie. She passed away. So this is when we were getting this dog. And so she wanted to name her Myrtle. I wanted to name her Snots. So we compromised and called her Myrtle. Um, <laughs> guys, you know what I'm talking about. That's how compromise works in a marriage, right? <laughs> so... Um, so this is Myrtle, and then um, they, they love each other, like, yeah, look at, I mean, son of a gun, right? Like, they are just so cute. They love each other. This was taken, Jen was out of town one week and for work, and she, it was like they had only each other. Like, those are Jen's dogs, and it was like they had only each other, and I, so I took that picture. So, so we have Myrtle, and we have Molly, and then um, it occurred to me that maybe some of you don't know who my wife is, so I thought I would put a picture up of my wife. So, um, so this is Jen, <laughs> right? <laughs> Hashtag blessed, you know? That, <laughs> when that face tells you you're blessed, you're blessed. Like that, when that face tells you anything, it's the truth. That is the truth of your life. So um, I had... I don't even know what I said that elicited that face, but I had my phone handy when she made that face, and I, and I took a picture. I, I did, I will say this, I, I asked permis, permission to use that picture, but like Paul said, everything is permissible, not everything is beneficial, so we will see just how beneficial it is, but I love this picture. In fact, I love this picture so much that I had this face put on a shirt. <laughs> I really, I really wanted to wear that shirt this morning. <laughs> Brittany reminded me that I might get called into the pastor's office this week if I wore it this morning. I actually can't believe that I still have it. Like, I can't believe Jen hasn't, like gone in and, and stolen it and burned it, um, but she, she loves it. I remember when I, when I wore that for the first time, I came in, 
And she just looked at me and she goes, why? <laughs> so, but she, she did say that if I showed any of these pictures, I had to show a nice picture. So this is, this is us. This is, yeah, that's our, our happy life. That was at the Christmas tree um, shop. And, and, you know, you could just say we are, we are hashtag blessed, right? I am hashtag blessed. But in this in this portion of scripture, Jesus is talking about a different kind of blessedness. He's talking about a different kind of blessedness. And, and so we're going to just take this, just like from, from a mountaintop, look down on the Beatitudes today, all right, just this high level overview of the Beatitudes and what they do for us, okay? So I thought it would be appropriate today just to kind of define some words for us and talk about a little bit of the context in which Jesus started talking about the Beatitudes and talking about the blessedness. So um, first off, the beat- a Beatitude, the definition of Beatitude is just supreme blessedness, supreme blessedness. And then if we drill down a little bit deeper, that word blessedness just means divine joy and perfect contentment. And I find it interesting, the, the circumstances that lead Jesus to start talking about this divine joy and perfect contentment. So if we back up a little bit into Matthew chapter 4, the end of Matthew chapter 4 says this, and I think we've got, yeah, um, it says, and Jesus went about all Galilee, teaching in their synagogues, preaching the gospel of the kingdom, and healing all kinds of sickness and all kinds of disease among the people. Then his fame went throughout all Syria, and they brought to him all sick people who were afflicted with various diseases and torments, and those who were demon-possessed, epileptics, and paralytic, and he healed them. Great multitudes followed him from Galilee and from Decapolis, Jerusalem, Judea, and beyond the Jordan. Now, if we take out the, 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 you know, the big number five there for, for chapter five, and we just kind of read through this, it says, so it, from, they, they followed him from Galilee and Decapolis, Jerusalem, Judea, and beyond the Jordan, and then Jesus, seeing the crowds, went up on a mountain. And it's debated right here whether Jesus was talking to just the disciples, if he was talking to like the group of 70 disciples that kind of followed him around, or if he was talking to the whole crowd. It's not debated whether he was talking to the whole crowd by the end of the Sermon on the Mount. All right, but it's kind of debated right here whether who he's talking to. And I can surmise from this that he's talking to just the 12 disciples, and the reason I think that is because, you know, earlier in chapter 4, a few weeks ago, we talked about temptation and how Jesus being tempted was, was what allowed him to experience the human condition. And I really think in this moment, Jesus is looking at all these people. He's looking at the fame that he's attracting. And, he's, and, he, and he maybe just gets worried for the disciples that they start thinking that this is what it means to be blessed, that this is what it means to be divinely joyful, that this is what it means to be perfectly content. And Jesus just wants to kind of head off that thinking and teach the disciples what it truly means to be blessed. So in this moment, Jesus is teaching us here that true contentment is not found in the world, but in pursuing the things that God pursues. It's a different kind of blessedness. So what do the Beatitudes do for us? Well, the first thing is the Beatitudes are a a measuring stick for humble self-awareness. 2 Corinthians chapter 13, verse 5 says, Examine yourselves to see if your faith is genuine. Test yourselves. Surely you know that Jesus Christ is among you. If, if not, you have failed the test of genuine faith. So it's this measuring stick. It's this thing that we can look at 
and, and, and kind of say, am I living out the attitudes of Christ? Am I, am I living the way Christ wanted us to live? A, a, am I humble? Do I mourn sin and brokenness? Am I meek? Am I living this out? So it's just this, and, and, and self-awareness, don't confuse that with self-consumption. That's why I put the word humble there. Because it's not self-consumption, all right? But the Bible tells us that we need to evaluate. We need to examine how we're living and whether we're, we're living like the attitude of Christ. And that's what the, the Beatitudes do for us. Have you ever known someone who had absolutely zero self-awareness? Like, like they just had no idea how they came off. They, they had no idea, like, that, you know, it's not appropriate to just jump in on a conversation and say what you think, right? Like, it, it, anybody ever, ever work with someone? I've had boss. I don't have a boss like that now, but I, I've had bosses that had absolutely zero self-awareness. And if you, I would just kind of tell you that if you don't know someone who has zero self-awareness, it might be you. Just, <laughs> just letting you know that. Just letting you know that. But we are, we, are, we are called, even in Romans chapter 12 and verse 3, it says, because of the privilege and authority God has given me, I give each of you this warning. Don't think you are better than you really are. Be honest in your evaluation of yourselves, measuring yourselves by the faith that God has given us. So we can use these beatitudes, we can use these statements from Jesus as a way to measure that, as a way to evaluate our own attitudes. The other thing that the beatitudes do for us is they teach us how to view contentment through the same lens that Jesus views contentment. It's sort of this, this upside down value system of Jesus. And when I think about hashtag blessed, my mind goes to social media. You know, my mind goes to like Facebook where you have that like 40-year-old soccer mom live, wearing the oversized sweatshirt and the leggings with the Ugg boots sitting on her couch with a big cup of coffee, you know, taking the selfie, duck lips, and saying hashtag blessed, right? Or, you know, those, those family photos where everyone's wearing flannel, and like they're in the they're in the wilderness. Some I don't even know where there's wilderness around here, but they're in the wilderness and they're taking photos and they're like standing with their backs to the camera like this and they're all holding hands and the dad is like real tall and handsome and has a full head of hair. That jerk. <laughs> and they're all wearing the nice boots. And it looks like they're walking into the forest. And I'm like, Where, what are you doing walking into the forest like that? Like, what? Like, you don't have any kind of survival gear. You're just wearing nice clothes and nice boots and just walking into the woods. Like, see you later. Hashtag blessed. Right? Or just pictures of your home where it looks like Chip and Joanna Gaines just threw up all over the place. You know? Just shiplap all over. Zach's ears just perked up. I said shiplap. <laughs> Hashtag blessed. But that's not what Jesus says is, is, is hashtag blessed. Those things aren't bad. And I'm not, if you took one of those pictures, I apologize. <laughs> if that's you, I, I'm sorry. Those things aren't bad. But that's not, that's not what's in the upside-down value system of Jesus. You know, you know Jesus, Jesus says, or the world says, look out for yourself, right? And Jesus says, blessed are the poor in spirit. The world says, if it feels good, do it. You know, you do you. You do you, boo. And Jesus says, blessed are those who mourn. Blessed are those who, who mourn sin and brokenness in this world. The world says, do whatever it takes to get ahead. Doesn't matter who you got to step on to get to the top. And Jesus says, blessed are the meek. Not the weak, the meek. 
quiet strength, just this trust that if I do what I'm supposed to do, God's going to get me where I want to go. That's what Jesus says. The, the, the world says, just crave earthly things. Just get what you want. And Jesus says, blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be filled. The world just wants to fill up on things. The world just wants to say, I've got this stuff, so now I'm blessed. And that's not what Jesus tells us. And, and if I can just tell you, this portion of scripture this week, it forced myself to ask some very serious questions about where I find my contentment. If I can just be raw with you for a moment, you know, you saw those pictures of, of my dogs. You saw those pictures of my wife. You saw all that. You know, back in May, we bought a, we bought a beautiful new house, and it's, it's, it's spacious, and, and it's just so, it's so great to be in it. It's got a little swimming pool in the back, just a little 15-foot above-ground swimming pool. And in the summertime, we just would float, because that's about all you can do in a pool that big, is just float around. And I remember we would, just, we, we would just be floating in the pool and we would just be so grateful. We were so grateful to be able to have those things. And I remember there's an old audio adrenaline song that says, this is the good life. And we would just sing it. We kind of laugh and we would sing, this is the good life. And this week I was, I was convicted when I had to ask myself, these questions of, of where I find my commitment. Because I don't know, if I can just, just be stripped down to the studs right now, I don't know if I could say that if all of these things over here, the house, the car, the marriage, the, the dogs, the, just the happiness, the, the comfort that we live in, the security that we live in, I don't know if all that got taken away, that I would be content in Jesus. I don't know. I just don't know. And I think, friends, that in America, the church just has this warped view of what it means to be blessed. And I think we've got to start asking ourselves that question. Would I still be perfectly content if everything I have gets taken away? John Piper prayed this prayer once. He said, fight for us, O God, that we not drift numb and blind and foolish into vain and empty excitements. Life is too short, too precious, too painful to waste on worldly bubbles that burst. Heaven is too great, hell is too horrible, eternity is too long that we should putter around on the porch of eternity. Mm. Paul says in 1 Timothy chapter 6, he says, yet true godliness with contentment is itself great wealth. After all, we brought nothing with us when we came into the world, and we can't take anything with us when we leave it. I love this. So if we have enough food and clothing, let us be content. But people who long to be rich fall into temptation and are trapped by many foolish and harmful desires that plunge them into ruin and destruction. For the love of money is the root of all kinds of evil. And some people craving money have wandered from the truth and pierced themselves with many sorrows. But you, Timothy, and you can replace that Timothy with your own name, but you, Andrew, but you, Zach, but you, Jennifer, are a man of God. So run from all these evil things. Francis Chan is a famous pastor, speaker, author, and he, um, he recently sold everything he owns and uh, just felt a call to go over to Asia to minister to people in Asia. And 
he was telling a story once about going to China, and he was talking to students who were part of the underground church in China, and they were telling him stories about how, how they, would, they would get chased by the police. And they would, they'd be in the streets and they would see police and they just knew like whenever you see a police officer in China and you're a Christian, you just, you just run. You just run. And so he, they're telling him about how they're just, they're running through the streets and, and, the, and the police are just, they're chasing after them. They're shooting their guns in the air and they're yelling at them and screaming at them. And these students are just, are just laughing and they're filled with joy telling this story. And Francis Chan was like, why are you laughing? Why, are you, why is this such a happy thing for you? And they're like, because this is what the Bible said would happen. This is what it is to be a Christian. They were, they were perfectly content and their heavenly father in that moment and my goodness we've got it all flipped around here in America the church has it all flipped around of what it means to be blessed what it means to be perfectly content so how do we move from hashtag blessed to hashtag blessed. How do we get from hashtag I'm happy because I've got all this stuff to hashtag I'll be content with just food and clothes? From, from hashtag give me more to hashtag take the world but give me Jesus. How do we make that transition? Well, in Micah chapter 6, verse 8, there's four things I'm going to give you, and three of them come from this verse. Micah chapter 6, verse 8 says, He has shown you, O man, what is good. And what does the Lord require of you but to do justly, to love mercy, and to walk humbly with your God? See, the words of Jesus in the Beatitudes encompass all these things to do justly, to love mercy, and to walk humbly with your God. So number one, do justly. The message translation says, do what is fair and just to your neighbor. We need to seek justice. Injustice should break our hearts. And we need to be peacemakers. You know, you notice that verse, when he says blessed are the peace, he doesn't say Blessed are the peacekeepers. He says, Blessed are the peacemakers. Why? Because this world will always be in conflict, right? There will always be people feuding, people warring, people battling. So Jesus calls us to be peacemakers, which means we have to go to the conflict and make peace. We have to seek out the injustice and make peace there. Romans 12, 18 says, do all that you can to live in peace with everyone. And I'm not a big, uh, not a big soapbox guy, but I'm going to get on it once, and then I'm going to get on it again in a second. Social media is not the place to battle. Church, social media is not the place to battle. We need to be peace makers there we need to look look out for one another does injustice break your heart does oppression break your heart do justly second thing love mercy ephesians 4 verse 32 says be kind and helpful to one another tender-hearted compassionate understanding. I love how the Amplified Bible says it. Forgiving one another readily and freely. Just as God in Christ also forgave you. You know, in Matthew uh, 5, at the end of the chapter, Jesus says, pray for those who persecute you. In that way, you'll be acting as true children of your Father in heaven. For he gives his sunlight to both the evil 
and the good, and he sends his reign on the just and the unjust alike. We need to let go of some stuff. We, we just live in a culture where we just want to hold on, right? We need to forgive. We need to love mercy. Blessed are the merciful. Why? Because they will receive mercy. We've got some things that we need to let go of. And here's my second soapbox. Cancel culture is not of God. It's not of God. Cancel culture is countercultural to Jesus culture. If, and, and don't hear the wrong thing there. I'm not saying that people don't have to pay the consequences for what they do. I'm not saying that they don't have to pay the consequences when they wrong someone or they hurt someone or they cause someone injustice or they cause someone oppression. But Jesus says, blessed are the merciful. The world says, cancel them. Jesus says, show mercy. We need to love mercy. Number three, walk humbly with your God. Louis Giglio says, humility is not a character trait to develop. It's the natural byproduct of being with Jesus. Can I read that again? Humility is not a character trait to develop. It's the natural byproduct of being with Jesus. We need to spend time with Jesus in his word, listening to him, in prayer, talking to him, and listening to him. We need to be looking for him in all of our situations. I mean, how many situations have you gone through where you looked back and you were like, I can see where God brought me out of that or brought me through that? Right? We, need to, we need to make sure that when we're going through those, that we're looking for him in that situation. How's he working? Spend time with him. Taking care of people, putting others' needs ahead of your own. Matthew 25 says this. He's talking about the sheep and the goats, and he says, then those sheep are going to say, Master, what are you talking about? When did we ever see you hungry and feed you, thirsty and give you a drink? And when did we ever see you sick or in prison and come to you? Then the king will say, I'm telling the solemn truth. Whenever you did one of these things to someone overlooked or ignored, that was me. You did it to me. You want to you wanna spend time with Jesus? Just follow the trail to brokenness. Follow the, the trail to, to the brokenhearted. Psalms 34 says the Lord is close to the brokenhearted. He rescues those whose spirits are crushed. I had a, 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 an opportunity a, a week ago to uh, take a tour through the Refuge of Hope. It's a homeless shelter in downtown Canton for men. They feed, they feed men and women and children, and, and they clothe men and women and children, but the shelter itself is for men. But can I just tell you that when I walked into that building, I just felt the presence of the Lord in that building. Why? Because, because that's where brokenness is. That's where brokenhearted people are. And that's where Jesus is. And you could, just, you could just feel the compassion pouring out of the people working there. And I was humbled in that moment. I was humbled because I was with Jesus in that moment. We need to create more space for him and less space for us. More of you, God, and less of me. Take the world. Give me Jesus. We need more space for him. And the fourth thing, stop believing that anything is better than Jesus. It's a lie of the enemy. 
And he will get you to believe it all the time. So stop. Just stop believing that anything is better than Jesus. Psalm 37 says, take delight in the Lord and he will give you your heart's desires. I think our world likes to drop off that first part. We just want to believe that the Lord will give us our heart's desires, but there's, there's a first part there. Take delight in the Lord. Believe that he is the best. He's the best that we can, that we can get. And then he'll give you the desires of your heart. The message says, take, uh, it says, keep company with God. Get in on the best. So I think that's how we get from hashtag blessed to hashtag blessed. Hashtag perfect contentment and divine joy. Let's pray. God, we just come to you and we honor you. And Lord, I just, I just pray this prayer that you would, you would fight for us, oh God. That we not drift numb and blind and foolish into vain and empty excitements. Because life is too short, too precious, too painful to waste on worldly bubbles that burst. Heaven is too great, hell is too horrible, eternity is too long that we should putter around on the porch of eternity. And Lord, I just, I just come to you now and, and I repent for all the times that, that I would rather have something else than you. And Lord, I know that in this room today, I'm not the only one who can say that. Lord, forgive your church for seeking contentment in anything but you. Help us to, to crave you. Help us to thirst for you, God. It's in your name we pray. We don't ever want to close out a service where we don't give you an opportunity to make Jesus the Lord of your life. Maybe you're, maybe you're sitting there and you just feel like, you know what, You'd, I don't feel that contentment. I don't feel that joy. I've got everything. And I just feel empty. And I would just tell you today, fill that emptiness with Jesus. So if you don't mind, just repeat this after me. And we won't single anyone out. So just if, if everyone would just pray with me. God, I believe in you today. And I accept your son as my savior. I repent for all the things that I've tried to fill my life with that doesn't honor you. And so I accept you today to be my father. Help me to live for you. In your name, amen. Well, thank you so much. It was just a pleasure to be with you this morning. Um, always, and as well as uh, with the youth, he does a wonderful job. And, uh, you know, ever since he, um, you know, kind of went through um, being sick a little bit, he cries a lot more. <laughs> so, um, but I just want to come up here and just give you guys a few quick announcements. But before I do, you know, Pastor Matt, um, he obviously showed you his dogs, <laughs> and um, <laughs> Pastor Andrew showed you his. Um, <laughs> so I thought, I might as well just show you mine. Uh, so this is Bella. That's right, congregation has spoken. Mic drop, I win. All right? <laughs> so this is Bella. Um, that's, that's she so is nice. a little Maltese. <laughs> She's fantastic. 
Uh, this one, she's younger. Now that she's grown up, I don't want to show you that one because she's got the worst crooked teeth ever. So we're going to stay with this picture, hashtag blessed, okay? Um, but anyways, we're just so glad, as you can tell, the joy of the Lord is in this place. We're so glad that you guys are here, you online. Thank you for joining us too. Um, but we just wanted to just close out uh, just with tithe and offering. And so we're just going to pop this up here real quick. And there's three ways you can give. There is uh, online. You can do it on the w online website. In person, as you're heading out the doors, there is three boxes there. And then smart giving. You can do it uh, through our app. Um, please feel no pressure to give if this is your first time. But again, I'll, I'll tell you what, it is just so uh, refreshing each and every week that we get to be together, uh, to be able to worship with you, to be able to sit here and hear the message with you and you online as well. I'm going to pray. And after that, you guys are dismissed today. And have a wonderful day, everybody. Lord, we just love you, and I just thank you, God, for each and every person that is here today, Lord, and, and those that are watching online, God. I just thank you just for their heart, Lord. Uh, Father God, just, just everybody that is here, Father, Lord, that is just praying for something, Lord, that they're just asking you, Father, and they're saying, Lord, I need you to come through. Lord, I just pray that there's just a season of outpouring, a season of blessing that happens, Lord. But Father God, in the same sense, Father, as Pastor Andrew was talking about, that even when things may not look great, Father God, we have you. You are more than enough. So, Father, we just thank you that we can sit back, even in the fiercest of storms, and say, I'm grateful and I'm thankful. God, we love you here today, and thank you for everything that you've done for each and every one of us here today. In the mighty name of Jesus, amen. Well, thank you so much for joining us, everyone. At this time, you are dismissed. Have a wonderful day, everybody. Thank you for joining us today here at Woodlawn. We hope you had an amazing experience. social media and like share and subscribe and if you're a regular attendee of woodlawn and would like to give away gift today there are three ways that you can do that one of those is through the giving tab on our website you can also give in person or use the woodlawn app if you prefer and don't forget every wednesday at 7 30 on facebook pastor matt is live coming to you with some scripture to get you through your week so don't miss it also, uh, we started this week uh, the break podcast, so that'll be every Friday at 12.30 p.m., so make sure you tune into that. Um, thank you so much again for joining us, and we hope you're back next Sunday at 9 a.m. or 10.45 a.m.